Hello and welcome to another Oxygen Not Included video. I want to talk about liquid pumps, specifically pumping extremely hot liquids and how you can accomplish this. Here we have a volcano. This volcano at over 1700 degrees of magma coming out. Here it is again. And if we look at this pump, it's pumping magma at over 1700 degrees through an obsidian pipe. But if you look at the temperature, the pump itself is at only 13 degrees. Now currently this pump is not being cooled, but we're going to look at how the cooling is set up for this in just a minute. Let's have a look at this a little bit more in depth. Here we have a simulated gold volcano. We just have uh, a puddle of gold here. It's just being held back by this door. And here's the way you set this up. First, let's have a look at the plumbing in more detail. Okay, we have the output of the pump. It's going through this uh, passive filter. Now this passive filter is presented by Tony Advanced in another video I'll link below. But in this particular case, it's being used to filter two liquids and then recirculate the priming liquid. And in this case, the priming liquid is not hot, whereas the liquid that we uh, want to pump, in this case gold, it is hot. And so this pump cannot touch gold. If it does, it's going to break but it has to detect a liquid in order to operate at all. And so we need a priming liquid. Let me get a little overlay to show you. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look at this in more detail. So first of all, we have the direction of the hot liquid that we want to pump in marked in red. Light blue indicating the priming liquid flow. Purple is the recirculation of this priming liquid and the orange is the return pipe for the priming liquid. Now here we have two squares. This is where the hot liquid will be removed from and pumped. And this is where the priming liquid will be detected and also pumped. Without this, the yellow square will not be pumped. Now we need to first get enough priming liquid into this tile here in light blue to begin with. And we can do that by using a one kilo or mini liquid pump. And we need about 35 kilos of naphtha to make this work. We can also use visco gel, but in this case, we're not using any space materials. So let's have a look at priming this. I'm gonna use pliers to disconnect this and connect this pipe here. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna speed this up. We're gonna go ahead and fill this up. And the pump will start running immediately. One thing that's important about this is the valve here needs to be set as low as possible. I've set it to one gram. You could even do 0.1 gram. This is enough. This is the amount of priming liquid that will be continuing to recirculate here. Now, as you can see, the exit pipe is disconnected. So we're gonna go ahead and hook that back up. And there we go. It's gonna go ahead and return back to this tile. And this, as you can see, there's a little bit of a delay here, but once the gold gets into the picture, this delay will not be an issue. Let's go ahead and get the gold. Okay, here we go. And let's have a look at what's happening now. Here we have five kilos of gold coming in. It's technically 10 kilos, but it's 10 and then skipped and then 10 and then skipped. And as a result of that, we'll get about five kilos per second. Now, one thing to note here, this seems to be a little bit of a delay with the amount of gold coming in. It's not exactly five kilos per second. And this is because this setup here uh, is not compact enough. This, this pipe right here with the return is too long. Now, as you can see here, this setup is a little bit more compact. Here we have a return pipe that's a little bit shorter. And as a result, we get a perfect five kilo per second on this exit pipe of hot liquid, which is a little bit longer over here. And therefore you don't always get a perfect uh, five kilos per second of the hot liquid. So make your return pipe as short as possible. I just made it a little bit longer here just to uh, let you see it a little bit more detail. This is a little bit harder to see, but it's exactly the same setup. Now I want to talk a little bit about the automation here. So this is a volcano pump and here we have a door. This is to make sure that the pump does not get overwhelmed. And you can also have a bypass door if you want. And I can just simply dump hot liquid down somewhere. But ideally you just make this volcano chamber large enough and it's not going to be a problem. Now if we have a look at the automation, let's have a look here. Okay. This setup here, basically you have a hydro sensor and the hydro sensor is set to above 500 kilo. Below that, the pump will not kick in. And the other part of this is, if this reservoir is full, this pump will stop. So this is just an end gate in the middle. 
The other thing here is the door is controlled by a knot gate. And so if there is too much liquid here, the door will shut. If there's not enough liquid down here, then the door will open. And that's it. Now the way you can construct this is first always make sure that the volcano is blocked off at least a little bit here. And before you even do that, make sure it's a perfect vacuum. Once you have a vacuum chamber, then you build all the airflow tiles around. And the airflow tiles need to be within the vacuum chamber, so you have to have some proper tiles on the up outside of that. You can use insulation tiles. And then you can uncover the volcano and then have this door in place. This door needs to be made out of wolframite. You could use steel as well, but wolframite is an easy early game material, provided that your map has wolframite. Once you have that, you can cap off your volcano and then you can begin building a pump. And instead of naphtha, you could use something else. You could use water, for example, but you gotta be very careful with the amount. And with naphtha, it's it's a lot easier. You just melt some plastic, and you can get your plastic from from some Dracos, and then just melt a little bit of that, and then you have naphtha, and you can build the setup. This doesn't require any steel; it's just using gold amalgam. It's gold amalgam again. And the last thing I want to talk about is how to cool this. And because this pump is in a vacuum, it needs a special way of cooling it. So here we have a bead of naphtha, and here we have a gas pipe full of hydrogen and it's dumping the heat into this hydrogen here. So let me show you the gas overlay. Here we have a pipe. This is the tile right here that's going to change the heat. And this is where the naphtha is. This exchanges the heat with the pipe, which then exchanges the heat with something outside. This could just be an atmosphere in your base. And this will keep this pipe nice and cool. And it does not affect the magma in any way because the pump never comes into contact with the magma. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the contactless pumps. If you have any additional comments, please leave them below. Please be respectful. And if you like this video, please hit a like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.